Hey everyone, what's up? This is Marcos with Future Studio University. Welcome to another video on our Happy Series. Within this video, I want to show you a developer goodie, which means you can pass your development errors to the browser and render a very nice looking view. And you can see immediately in which file you made a mistake, like calling a function on undefined or accessing a variable on undefined. All right, so let's jump over to GitHub and I will show you the plugin that you will install on your Happy server. All right, it's the Happy Dev Errors plugin and it's our plugin, we developed it and you can see that this plugin passes the error data to a view in the browser and you can see this is a default error view and you can also activate Yauch which renders a different error view. I mean, it's the same error. You can see that the reply not available is not a function in the default.js and it's the same here, reply not available. This little goodie will help you to find the errors very quickly that you did during your implementation. Okay, so let's go to the next step, which is the installation. As you know, you can use a favorite package manager by default, it may be npm or yarn, and you can just add it to your dependencies in your package.json file. It's a happy dev errors plugin. Okay, so now let's get to the usage. The happy dev errors plugin is disabled by default, which means there's no sensitive data leaking to the browser during production, and you shouldn't enable it in production mode to avoid sending any credentials or any, any project structure in the browser. So there might be a situation where you are having an issue during a production setup and you don't want to send the nice looking view for errors to the user. There should be a generic message like there is an issue and maybe use an error tracking service like Sentry or Rollbar, but you shouldn't enable it and I will show you how to disable it in production. Okay, so by default, there are three options for the happy dev errors plugin. It's the show errors, which takes a Boolean value and it's false by default, you can see it here. And you should find a value that represents a truthy or falsy value, like a Boolean value that you should use. Okay, the next option is the use Yauch. It's a Boolean value as well, and it's just like true or false. And if you want to decide between the Yauch error over the default error, and I will show you what it looks like. The third option is a template. This is a string value for the view that you might want to create yourself when using the Happy Dev Errors plugin. So you can create a custom view and we will get back to that later. For now, let's just check out how this plugin works. I will go back to WebStorm and open the entry point of our server.js file for the future Flix application. And you can see that the Happy Dev Errors plugin is already registered. So, so you have to specify at least the option for the show errors property. And what I'm using is an environment variable for the node env. And if it does not equal production, we will activate the Happy Dev Errors plugin. Okay, so let's force an error to see what it looks like. Let's go to the command line and start our server so that we can change our configuration and the service restarts automatically. Let's use supervisor to do that and wait if it starts successfully. Okay, you can see that the server listens on localhost with port 3000. Let's start it here. Okay, let me zoom in so you can see it better. Okay, so the start page is working at this point. Let's change the configuration so it doesn't work anymore. We will open the handler for the index. All right, so let's update this to a function that isn't working. And in the background, the server is restarting. You can see it down here. Okay, let's go to Chrome. Hey, it's me again. I'm just back from the future. I just cut the video and I saw that I didn't show you the default happy error handling. So I wanted to sneak in the default error handling and you can see all the benefits why happy dev errors is a really nice plugin for your development. Okay, so let's switch back to WebStorm and deactivate happy dev errors so that we can see how the default error view of happy looks. You know, we just 
added the or forced the error with the dot test method. Let's go back to the server and comment this plugin registration. Um, let me do it like this with line comments, save it, check item again, server restarted and go back to Chrome. All right. So this is a default error view of happy. You don't know any specific details about the issue. So now you need to jump back to the command line to see where the actual error is. You might not see this part of the logging, but you will definitely have the debug and the error stack trace. So you need to jump from the browser to your command line and watch out for the issue, which is in the handler.js file and line 13. All right, so in WebStorm, you can see that we did it in line 13. All right, now back to the actual happy dev hours view and refresh. Okay, so you can see that there is an error and it tells us that the reply view dot test function isn't available and it's located within the base handler at line 13. Let's get back to WebStorm. You can see it here. It's the within the base folder, the handler.js file, and it's in line 13. All right, so you can see that by default, you will get the highlighting for the specific file that includes the line and the column. Okay, let's go back and change the configuration to use Yauch. So I will just go back to Chrome the server in the background for happy just restarted and let's see how it looks like this. All right, so you can see that there's another looking view. I mean, it's just up to you if you prefer the default error, which presents the error message and the stack trace. This one has some highlighting for the code and also a specific uh, box or it presents a specific rectangle for the code, which is in the file that caused the error. And you can see here that the reply.view, um, the test function on that call caused the issue. It's the same within the handler.js file located in the server folder base and then in line 13. All right, down here, you can see some request details. It's the URI and you can see the HTTP method, the version and some headers and also some cookies. Okay, so I told you that there is a third option, which is, let's go back to the GitHub view, it's called template. So I will get back to WebStorm and activate the template option. And you can see that I've specified a server minus error view, and it's already prepared. I've created a simple error view. We will render that. And when using the template option, it accepts a string value and the string value represents the view file that you're going to render. So now you have this situation. You are specifying that you want to use Yauch and you're already or additionally specifying that there's a template you want to render. And happy dev errors has the following priority. At first, it always uses your custom template. So if you're specifying a custom template, it's the one used doesn't matter which option is activated besides the show errors. Okay, if you comment the template option, it prioritizes the use Yauch over the default option. So it's like having the first is the template, second is Yauch, and the third is a default view, which is based on the very first view that I've showed you. All right. So we can leave the configuration like this, but to be very clear, we can comment the use the out option. Okay, let's go back to Chrome and refresh this view. All right, so the view that I'm using here keeps the user in the context of the actual layout. So which means if you're rendering a base layout on your application, like we do on FutureFlix, you can reuse the dynamic handlebars or whatever other template engine you're using, and you can reuse the layout and keep the user in the context or yourself in the context because you don't want to pass the errors to the user. And 
This specific view just tells us that there's an internal server error at route for the request method get at the um, base route or root route. And the error details are like uncaught error and we can see that the test function is not available on reply.view. And here you can see that it gets highlighted as well. I'm modifying the stack trace to highlight the HTML using the mark tag. Okay, so it's very simple. I wanted to show you how to use the template for the happy dev errors. And you might be asking which values do you have available when rendering a custom view? And let's go to the happy dev errors page on GitHub. And you can see in the section for the provided values for your custom error view that the plugin uses the reply.view function and it passes a template name and also the error data. I mean, the code is set to 500, which is a typical status code for bad implementation. Okay, so there are multiple properties that you have available. At first, you have the title, which is always the internal server error. And then you have the status code, which is always 500, but now it gets more specific. So when using the message, it replies a specific error detailed message and the method is the HTTP method you can show if you are interested in it. The URL is the relative path of your URL from the request and the headers object is in the format of key values which is from the request. So if there are any headers that you are interested in or any header that could maybe customize the functionality of your request, you might be looking for it as well. So and in the payload, you might have sensitive data. So be very careful to lock it to the browser, like sending passwords from your client side and don't encrypt it with any hashing mechanism. You shouldn't display the, the payload publicly. So be careful with the payload. Okay, and of course there's a stack trace, but the stack trace is a large string, so you need to customize it a bit. And you can always use JavaScript functionality to do some string manipulation. All right, so these are the data objects that you have available in your views, and you can use them in your templates, in your custom templates, but not in any default view. So the default views are static, they come predefined with the Happy Dev Errors plugin, but your custom view can be much more extensive and you can use all the data from these objects or fields within the error object. Okay, so if you're missing any feature, just check out the repository on GitHub, send a feature request within an issue on GitHub, or even send a pull request on GitHub, we totally appreciate your support. And if you like this plugin, you can, you can give it a star as well. So check this repository out. Hey, it's me again, back from the future part two. So I forgot another important feature of Happy Dev Errors, which is if you're serving your Happy server as an API and you are responding to JSON requests, you can evaluate or Happy Dev Errors evaluates the accept header. So when setting it to application JSON, you can expect a JSON response from the happy instance where happy dev errors is installed. Okay, let's check that and go to the Postman tool. Okay, you remember that we are serving, let's use this route, the base route where we force the error. And now let's set the header, it's the accept, uh, accept one, and it's application JSON. Okay, so what we are expecting is a JSON response with all the details that you would get to render your view, and let's send the request. All right, so you can see that there is a JSON response. You see that the status code is also 500 for the internal server error. And here are all the fields that I've already showed you within the previous explanation when rendering a custom view that you have access to a specific fields. And here you can see that we have 
the individual fields and also the stack trace as a huge string. You can see that there's the backslash n to have a line break and also in some individual headers. Yeah. Use this functionality during development when using like a client side framework or developing on an Android app. And yeah, feed your backend developer with additional information and steps to reproduce so they can help you and you can help them to fix the issues. All right, so back to the actual video. Okay, let's get back to WebStorm and recapture all the functionality I've shown. Okay, so within the request or within the route handler, I've created or forced an error, which is a test function that is called on the replay view functionality. And you can guess that this causes an error. <clears throat> within the server.js file, I've registered the happy dev errors plugin, which requires the show errors option and you need to pass a boolean value like comparing the node env environment variable against production to enable this during development and disable it in production. And you can choose between different templates. You can use your custom template in your rendering engine or you can use the predefined. Let me show you again. This is a, oh, sorry. This is a default error view, or you can use the Yauch error view. Ah, the server didn't restart fast enough. So you can use this view as well. I mean, we like this view. It's very expressive and it gives a nice overview of all the details that you need during your bug hunting. We hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it and if you learn something new. Check out the Future Studio tutorials. We have a dedicated tutorials for this video as well. It's linked in the description below. And if you want to know more about the FutureFlix application, it's the sample application that we use in our learning path called Learn Happy. And within FutureFlix, you're building your own Netflix-like streaming platform. It's a complete app that you're building from zero to the end within a dedicated guide that shows you how to implement like authentication and connecting your application to track TV, to fetch data for movies and series and whatever. We will get to the point where you will ultimately be able to stream videos to your users. So check it out as well. It's also linked in the description below. All right. We hope you learned something new. Enjoy your day, enjoy coding and make it rock.